Hi everyone, welcome to Crochet Rocks. My name's Tracy, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the front post treble crochet. Um, now, I made earlier a little row of foundation treble crochet, that's foundation double crochet in the US. So, I'm just going to show you with that. Now, this one is in the round, and the reason I'm doing that is because I've just made three pairs of gloves showing this and um, I wanted to make it a little more clear because the uh, yarn I used was difficult colours to see so I thought I'd do the stitch tutorials that I included in those gloves. So I'm going to join it the same way by going into the top of the two chain I made for this tutorial. Now um, for that stitch, now that tutorial is um, also in this playlist so if you wanted to watch that then please do. So how we start is to make one chain. Now I've got this a little bit um, zoomed in so hopefully you'll see it okay. Here is our first stitch that's the two chain. And we yarn over and we insert just before the stitch and come out just after it and we yarn over and pull it through. So we've actually gone through the stitch, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to do that in each one. So it's yarn over, we go in, see there's the gap between the stitch, we go into this side and we go round it and out the other side. Yarn over, and pull up the loop, sorry, the yarn was getting in the way. And then we yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And again, yarn over into the gap, round the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. So we've actually gone through it. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And again, yarn over into the gap, out the other side of it, yarn over and pull through. So we have the three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So if you have a look at them, you can see we've gone round them. So they're standing a little bit more proud than they would normally. So we yarn over into the gap and through the other side, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we just keep doing that. I find it easier to hold it this way and then I can see where I'm going. And I just pull that out with my other finger. Sorry, this is zoomed in so you probably can't see it too well. So I'll do it again. Hold it this way and then if I pull it out with my finger I can see exactly where I'm going in and out. But you do it however you feel comfortable but that's just how I feel better doing it. Again in this side, out that side. Oh, can't get that one as I did. Again I know not everybody holds their work the same as I do so it might not work for you but principles the same in this side of the stitch out the other yarn over pull through it and complete the stitch again so what I did I'm getting to the end and when I got to the end of my cuff I'll show you exactly what I did because this is just like a mini version of it it's got a few more stitches to go through through first as the coming to the end. So this would be in the last one before the join. I went through this one. Oh, didn't go through that loop. <clears throat> so I've gone through that one. Now I want to go through this. Now these are the two chain that we did at the start. And we'll just go through those. It may look a bit odd for now but it helps to bring it together. So now we don't 
in, in my tutorial for my gloves, we just continued to go round in a spiral. No chains, no slip stitching. So if you, if you look at this, it's ever so easy to just push it through. That's why I like to hold it that way. And then just bring that up, push it through. My finger to bring it up and just push it through. It's not so easy with a camera in the way as when I'm sitting there doing it myself. But if you don't like, I think I've already been there that one. Let me just get some yarn. This is doing. It just really wants to hang down all the time. It's so annoying. So yarn over. If you don't like doing it that way, you can still continue going in and back out, but I just find it easier. Same principle. But you just keep going round in a spiral. Go through it, through the stitch. Just makes a really nice rib. I really like this. Because you're doing it in a round, it's showing, it's showing up as a rib. But if you did this on alternate rows, you would get a ridge. It makes a ridge the other side, which in some patterns is quite decorative. I made a shawl from Bagger Day, from Crystal from Bagger Day and uh, one of the rows was to make that ridge. I would not really seen anybody use it like that before, it had always been the reverse side but it actually looked quite effective on that. Um, I think it was her sweetheart, sweetheart, no, innocence shawl, that's it, the innocence shawl. And that was one row of uh, front post stitch and it just made the ridge and you can see them on the back. So it's, <clears throat> if you're doing it in the round like this, it's easy to see how many rows you've done just by counting the ridges. So you know how many you've done, but I just wanted to show you with this um, lighter coloured yarn. It's really difficult for me to have my yarn that side, but it's just wanting to go that way. It's very annoying. But I wanted to show you, yes, with this lighter coloured yarn, just in case it was difficult for you to see on the glove tutorials. I know there was only a couple of people that had said that it was there. They'd have to watch it again and stuff. So I thought, well, if I could try and do it, with um, a lighter colour and a darker hook, then that might be more helpful. So, um, I don't know what that speck is. It's stuck to my, um, my wall. But yeah, just keep going round. But as you can see, it makes a really nice rib. And I think just by going sliding through that top part of the stitch like I do is actually a bit better makes a nicer neater rib than if you were going around the bottom part of the stitch with the the whole of it so if I pull that tight you see it's starting to really look kind of cool and then with the foundation um, treble at the bottom it makes it nice and stretchy because if it was just a row of chain it wouldn't stretch like that and um, with my tutorial I left a nice long tail just to to secure this and so it meets up nicely so I hope that's been a little bit more enlightening for you and uh, it's just a case of going um, round and round doing it until your cuff is as wide as you want it obviously this isn't um, a cuff. This is just a little swatch to uh, to show you. Um, wouldn't really fit my wrist in any case. Maybe a, a child or someone very slim. But yeah, it's quite um, quite a good stitch, I think, to just make your cuff with. I've previously, I'd um, before I did this. Um, 
it was kind of a making your cuff in like a long way tying it, uh, securing it and then picking up the stitches but I think this is so much better than that I'm so glad I um, you know found this out really and it makes cuffs so much nicer than doing it that way so when I got to the end I just wanted to show you I finished on this stitch which is this side of my little gap and on this particular stitch here I did a Imagine this is the end of your cuff, you just do a slip stitch. And you might think that that would look odd because you've got a tall stitch and you've just suddenly ended off. But if you kind of give it a little pull, because you've been going round in in rounds, it evens up really nicely. Don't look like you've got um, a wider stitch here than, and you've gone and you've stepped down. It looks perfect. So that's how... I made the cuff obviously it was a lot bigger than that so thanks for watching and if you haven't already just uh, consider subscribing <clears throat> and hitting the notification bell setting that to all and you'll be informed when there are new tutorials and live chats and giveaways just check out to see if I've got any giveaways going at the moment because I probably have so thanks for watching and bye for now